it's me, Yvonne, your local non-binary witch, and I'd like to talk to you about Sawain. So uh, Sawain, or Savine, um, is the Irish and Scottish name of um, the festival of the end of summer. In Welsh, it's called Nos Calan Gaiaf, Gaiaf um, and these names are not interchangeable, and really, uh, if you're English or of English ancestry, um, it's probably a better idea to use something like Hallow's Tide or Allen Tide or Holland Tide, which are the traditional English names. Now, I say that because uh, people from Scotland and Ireland and indeed Wales are getting a bit fed up of the rest of us pinching their names for things. So it's about time we got our own. And I rather like Hallow's Tide as a name. Um, I like names with tide in them because it implies a sort of a flow from one season to the next. So what is this festival about? Well, it seems that in ancient times, uh, people weren't necessarily celebrating a festival of the dead at this time of year. That seems to have arrived with Christianity. But nonetheless, modern pagans have kind of retro engineered this festival to make it into a festival of the dead. Now, this kind of thing happens with religions. It can't be helped. And so let's just go with the flow. So why is this time of year associated with witches? Well, so in the medieval period, people were afraid of the dead because they didn't like the idea that people could come back from the grave because uh, they might be vampires or something. And so they, they resisted and shunned all the things of the night. And witches in particular were seen as forces of part of the forces of darkness. And so that's why witches get associated with Halloween. Um, now, one of the important functions of Halloween in our culture is to allow us to confront the dark and scary parts of the psyche and the dark and scary things that, that are part of our relationship to life and the world. So we need to confront death and we need to confront our fear of ghosts and our fear of the dead. And we need to actually incorporate the fact that one day we're going to die we need to incorporate that into our conscious awareness. And so actually Halloween is really useful for that purpose. Um, and it also serves the function of introducing children to these things very gently and allowing them to understand that, you know, one day they're going to die or maybe their parents are going to die or their grandma's going to die. So it is performs an important psychological function and so that's why I think it's really useful to have this time of year just as summer is coming to an end and autumn is starting up and things are dying off it seems a logical time of year to talk about death and dying because the trees are dying or the leaves on the trees are dying not the actual trees um, the trees are going into a dormant phase and so um, that's why this time of year is important. Psychologically we also descend into um, a period of inner darkness. Now the darkness has nothing to fear. If you think about it the darkness is necessary for rest and regeneration. Um, if it was light all night, you wouldn't be able to sleep. Uh, trust me, I know this because I have tried to sleep in um, Iceland when the sun doesn't set and it's really hard to sleep with the sun still shining in the window. So we should be thankful for the night because that's what allows us to sleep and also allows, shows us the stars coming out in the sky. So all good. Uh, the the darkness also symbolizes the goddess and the infinity of night. And so I don't like the, I don't like it when people use darkness as a metaphor for evil. In fact, in paganism, darkness is seen 
as a necessary part of the cycle of life, death and rebirth. So darkness is a good thing in paganism. So Halloween is a great festival and it allows us to connect with things that we don't really talk about, such as the dead and the spirit world. And it's also a good time for divination. Now, one of my favorite things that I like to do with any group of people at Halloween is to sit around and talk about people we've loved who have died and to remember them. So it's a really simple thing to do. Uh, you have a group of people in a circle. Um, each one brings a photo or a memento of their loved one that they want to talk about. They show everybody in the group their, um, their photo or their memento, and then they just tell the group why that person was important to them. And if you like, you can uh, add more detail to this by like lighting a candle for each person or um, you know, doing it as part of a bigger Halloween ritual. Um, but really, this is just a great thing to do to actually just talk about and remember loved ones who have died, because we don't do that very often. And most people who have taken part have said that they found it very moving. And so I would recommend that. So Halloween, not necessarily quintessentially the season of the witch. Um, you know, we are witches and Wiccans all year round. Um, I'm, you know, let's hear it for the Christmas witch and the springtime witch and the, you know, the summer witch. Um, these are all valid archetypes of a witch. And I don't think we should necessarily allow ourselves to be tied specifically to this time of year. I think, you know, I'm very fond of Halloween as a festival um, and Hallow's Tide, but for reasons of connecting to the greater cycle of life, death and rebirth, um, not because I'm going to put a load of goth makeup on <laughs> and oh, I, okay, I do wear a bit of pointy hat at Halloween, I've got to admit. Um, but, you know, it's about connecting to the greater cycle and therefore we should be celebrating the whole cycle and not just Halloween itself. So with all of that, I will wish you a happy Hallow's Tide and, um, you know, enjoy the season, um, eat lots of candy and um, be a bit scary. Ooh. Right. Take care. Bless the bee.